The next is practice accountability. That has many different elements. You have to be accountable to yourself. You are the leader. You are the person people respect. If you don't perform the priorities that are necessary in a timely way, if you don't follow through, if you don't deal with opportunities or problems, if you procrastinate on meeting with your team members or reviewing their performance or giving them uh, compliments or raises or promotions, you are going to limit your success. Accountability means when you make appointments, you keep them. When you make a commitment, you honor it. It means that you are true to yourself and true to others and people get to know you as someone who absolutely is 100% dependable to do what you say when you say it, to not disrespect or demean or diminish anyone. But if you can't be accountable to yourself and your team or your clients, I mean, there's a problem, you resolve it. When there's uh, a an opportunity, you capitalize on it. When there's somebody who has a problem in the team, you don't avoid it. When somebody deserves commendation or a reward or a promotion, you do it because you're you're building an environment, and you want to set a model, because you if you're not accountable to yourself and others. You have no right to expect anyone else to be accountable to themselves or others too. Very simple, but very profound. Next, confront reality. Confront reality. Don't be delusional. Don't be uh, unrealistic. If your product has flaws, acknowledge it and fix it. If your dealings with your marketplace has flaws and people are dissatisfied, Acknowledge it and fix it. If you're not the best leader, acknowledge it and learn how to be a better one. If you don't have the ability to get your people to feel like being in your company is a great decision and a great future for their career and that they're part of a mission, then fix it. If reality is that the business you're in is dying then don't wait for it to die. Start studying alternative businesses, technology, other things to do, and start moving to find alternatives. If your product is just mediocre and your competitor's, pro competitor's product are great, acknowledge it and either position your product as cheap and worth the low price or make your product better. If people are quitting all the time, it means either you do not make them feel uh, like there's a future, it means you demean them, it means you don't pay them well enough, you don't reward them either in money or in, in mental and psychic compliments. The truth is always clear and evident if you don't act like you are oblivious. The more you acknowledge and respect reality, the more powerful and profitable you will be and the more loyal and higher performing everyone else will be on your team. So look around the business. Reality means the market you're doing, you're, you're pursuing, the product you're selling, the way you're selling it, the message you're making, the way you're dealing with clients, the problems that you're not solving, the Whatever elements of the business aren't working, whatever commitments you make publicly to others or just need to make to yourself, you cannot procrastinate, you cannot equivocate, you cannot contemplate in a fast-moving, reality-based world where competition is acute. You want to be successful, acknowledge and recognize reality pure and simple and confront it and make it your prisoner 
Be victorious. You want to be a victor, not a victim. Number 11, keep commitments. If you tell somebody you're going to have a meeting at 12, don't go out to lunch and come back at 1. If you tell a client you're going to call them back on a problem within a half hour, don't not call them at all or don't call them tomorrow. If you tell somebody you're going to have a repairman out in two hours, don't send them in two days. If you tell an employee you're going to review their uh, performance and give them a review and hopefully a raise in 30 days, don't wait eight months. If you tell a vendor you're going to pay a bill by Friday and you don't have the money, call and tell them you can only pay part of it or if you have the money, pay it. Whatever you do, keep your commitments. And this goes two ways. Critically important, you keep your commitments to others. Equally as important, you keep your commitments to yourself. Because you will always know in your heart and your soul if you have been unreliable to yourself. And that will eat you away and make you mediocre. There's no place in business anywhere in the world, and certainly not in Japan, for mediocrity. You want to represent greatness, and greatness is built on trustworthiness, preeminence, external focus, consultative advisory, uh, selling, and a general commitment to operate at a higher altitude, attitude and elevation of conduct, of ethics, of ideals, of integrity, and of respect for others far above everyone else you compete with. If you can do that, you'll have great advantage. Next, listen first. Very few people are skilled in the art of listening. Managers, entrepreneurs particularly, they just want to tell. So if somebody starts talking, they really don't want to hear it. They just wait for them to take a breath so they can take over. Stephen Covey said this, and this is his son that wrote this, but listen first before trying to be heard. People need to be acknowledged. They need to feel they're respected. They need to feel they are relevant. One of the lessons I learned earlier in my life is your first goal is to try to understand, appreciate, examine, evaluate, acknowledge, and respect how many different ways different people see a situation or their life. No two people are having the same reality. And if you're the entrepreneur, your team members aren't playing the same game you are. You're playing a game to grow independent and successful, maybe prosperous. They're playing a game to try to choose who to commit their career to. Who's going to give them the most respect? Who's going to give them the greatest satisfaction? Who's going to keep increasing their value, who's going to grow and develop them, who's going to make them feel a part of a bigger, uh, a bigger uh, cause. And if you can't do that for them, they won't stay. And if you don't respect them, they won't stay. And if you don't listen to them and hear them and reflect on them and not just try to shove your thoughts into their minds without giving them the respect, they won't perform, so it's very important. Finally, and most importantly, if you want to be trusted, extend trust. Trust your team. Trust your clients. Trust your vendors. Trust your partners. In summary, your job is not to fall victim to the same way of flawed thinking and action and beliefs that so many mediocre or limited companies or entrepreneurs in Japan follow. Your job is to operate in the realm of greatness. Your job is to operate 
and build a business that's preeminent. Your job is to make everybody in your life better off because you are in it. Your job is to multiply everybody's situation. Your clients are multiplied because your product delivers greater benefit or safety or protection. Your employees are benefited because you create a better environment, both of fulfillment, connection, and growth and development and earning. Your vendors are rewarded because you grow and they grow with you. Your community is rewarded because you are somebody they're proud of and they know do more, care more, and contribute more through your business than your competitors. When you get to that place, success will absolutely be yours. Now, if you follow everything I've shared in this program, we have a statement in the States, which is very appropriate now. It is yours to lose, meaning the only way you will not be successful is if you basically blow it because I've given you the success lessons. I've given you ways to eliminate risk investment. I've given you insights into the marketplace, marketing, selling, motivating, leading, collaborating, gaining respect and being respectful. I've taught you how to think preeminently and preemptively. Now it's up to you. I've got a couple more quotes before I say goodbye. This is a quote from an old friend of mine. He's deceased, but he said, more is accomplished in business through movement than was ever accomplished through meditation. By that I mean meditation is great, but you've got to take action. And you don't just take random action. You think through what you're going to do, why you're going to do it, when you're going to do it, how you're going to do it, what you're going to do if it doesn't work. You have the ability to create a wonderful life, a prosperous life, a fulfilling life, a satisfying life, an exciting life in a business that you choose. But it cannot and won't happen if you don't follow the lessons and the principles and the instruction that I have shared with you in all these modules. Now it's your turn. What you do with this is up to you. But there's no reason you can't use what I've shared to create for yourself a wonderful start that you can continually grow and multiply and multiply. And it can be something wonderful that the world will be proud of that you'll be proud of, your family will be proud of, it'll be financially rewarding, and you'll create an environment for your team that is wonderful and a, a position in your industry or world that is very respectful. That is my wish for you. The final, final quote, and I might have said it earlier, but I'll say it again, two. One is a quote from a man named Bob Proctor, a very interesting man. He says that almost every entrepreneur, particularly startups, struggle silently. They don't say it out loud, but they struggle in their mind and their heart with a, with a, uh, uh, a destructive and self-sabotaging question. The question is, am I really worthy of this goal? Can I really build an independent business? Can I make a livelihood? Can I create a product or service or company that adds more value? Can I lead and guide people? Can I build an organization? Can I really uh, gain success and independence? Once you realize how much more is possible for you and your business and how few people in Japan really capitalize on all these wonderful elements that I've shared, the right question is not, am I worthy of this goal of being successful? The right question is, is the goal worthy of me? Because there's so much more you can do with your time, your opportunity, your ability, your understanding, your effort, your passion, your purpose, and all the possibility that is yours. The last quote and the most final one is the, a quote from a famous advertising expert named Leo Burnett. He said, if you set your sights, meaning if you reach for the moon and the stars, one thing is certain. You will not end up with a handful of mud. 
means you reach as high as you can. You may not get there, but you're not going to get there. So I hope these modules have inspired, have clarified, have illuminated, have uh, intensified your desire to be an entrepreneur, start a business, build success. I hope you understand now the elements that make a business very successful, both in purpose, in process, in uh, positioning, in proposition. I hope you understand how to um, be part of everybody in your, uh, we call it business ecosystem. Everything from vendors to team members, advisors, community, influencers, and of course prospects and buyers. And I hope to receive an enormous number of letters that share with me the successes you, you achieve. And I want those successes to certainly be financial. But as you will learn, they are equally uh, important if they are emotional, psychic. You need a business and a purpose and fulfillment that gets your heart singing, that rocks your boat, that brings you alive, that you get excited about the people you do it for and the impact you make in their lives, not just the buyers, but your team members too. So I've laid it all out. I've given you more insight and understanding than I think anybody ever has to somebody wanting to start a business. I've shown you all the different ways you can do it without risk or investment. I've given you clear-cut instruction on how to be a great entrepreneur, how to be a great strategist, how to be a great marketer, how to be a great leader, how to be a great team member, how to be a great employer, how to be a great uh, citizen of your community, how to be a great success. Now what you do with it is up to you. But I will be disappointed if you don't allow yourself to realize the uh, enormous and wonderful potential that is awaiting once you take action. Thank you.